Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Your skin is a visual representation of your habits over time. You want to look at it as more of a preventative means of taking care of your skin. In today's video, I'm sharing seven skincare tips to do in your 20s to set your skin up for success. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha, and on this channel, I post a lot of skincare, makeup, lifestyle, and hair related videos. If that is something you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. Without further ado, let's get started. start out very easy. The first tip is to never skip sunscreen. This is a tip that I wish that I incorporated into my skincare routine long before I actually did. Because to be honest, I never quite understood sunscreen in relation to deeply melanated skin until about three or four years ago, which as a skincare enthusiast, I'm kind of like crying at the fact that that was the case, but it's never too late to start. For people with darker skin, I'm sure you've all heard that we have a natural SPF around 13 to 14. While this may be true, it's not nearly enough to actually give you an SPF factor Factor that prevents against both UVA and UVB rays. A for the aging, B for the burning. If you do live in an environment where there are multiple seasons, you're going to see more UVB rays become important when it's in the summer months. This is because the UV rays are a lot stronger in the summer versus in the winter. Which makes sense because in the winter you are less likely to get a burn from being outside in the sun. But where UVA rays are concerned, these are pretty much consistent all year long. Doesn't matter if it's raining outside, if it's sunny outside, if it's pouring, if it's snowing, if it's foggy, you are still being targeted by these UVA rays. Tip number two, start cleansing properly. For something that is so simple and integral to your skincare routine, it's often one of the areas that you're never really taught on how to do. There are a lot of skincare tools on the market focused on cleansing your skin. And I'm sure a lot of people, myself included, are very much so attracted to these cleansing tools. Everything from facial brushes, the spinning head ones, to the scrubby tool, um, the, what do you call it, the silicone brushes, all, so many of them to choose from. But the truth is that the only thing you really need to use to cleanse your skin is your fingers. If you're doing it correctly, you can actually get a really deep cleansing routine just from using your fingers. You are already equipped with all the tools that you need to have great skin. Your skin is designed to heal itself. You just have to create an environment where it can do so effectively. Learning how to clean your skin properly is gonna set you up for success because a lot of the issues that we see with skin circles around either overwashing your skin, over cleansing your skin, or not cleansing it enough. And so if you can nip that in the butt right away, you'll be set up for success. Tip number three, stop touching your face. Now this involves picking, touching, rubbing, poking, everything that you're doing on your face, please stop. There's something so satisfying about squeezing a pimple out or digging a, a zit off of your face. I don't know why, because it's the weirdest thing that we do to our bodies. But anyways, picking at it or popping a pimple, while it may seem satisfying right now, it is gonna be creating more harm than good. The act of actually pushing a pimple out of your skin, out of your skin, is actually usually pushing the pimple deeper within the skin. The good thing, about a pimple is that it keeps all of the dirt, bacteria, oil, everything that's blocking your pore contained within the follicle. So eventually, whether you do something to it or not, it's going to get released by your skin's natural skin cell turnover process, which happens every 28 days on average. The pressure that it takes to pop the pimple allows the juices to come out on the surface of the skin, but it also does this on the base of the follicle as well. While it erupts on the top, the follicle tends to erupt at the bottom as well, spreading all that bacteria, dirt, oil, or further around into your skin. This spreads bacteria, and the actual follicle can become infected, causing you a deeper scarring and even more pimples developing around the area. So you're actually not really helping your skin at all. Your hands are some of the dirtiest parts of your body, naturally, because they touch everything. They touch doorknobs, they touch light fixtures, they touch your phone, your phone has been on the floor, you put it in your hand, you touch your face, and then all of that bacteria is just sitting on these little phalanges here. And they have time to accumulate under the nails as well. So if you're not cleaning your nails properly, 
you dig at your face with all the bacteria still under your nails, you're transferring bacteria from the environment, unknown microbiomes into your own microbiome. And you're going to be disrupting what is currently going on in your body. So as much as possible, try not to touch your face. The less that you intently stare at these spots on your face, the less you're gonna see. And when it comes to that whole out of sight, out of mind mentality, it definitely applies here. Tip number four. Focus on prevention products. Like we said before, it is a lot easier to prevent problems than it is to fix them later on. So everything from sunscreen, like we said before, things like retinol, which has been proven to be very effective for treating acne and also very effective at preventing fine lines and so on and so forth, these are products that you want to use. Antioxidants like vitamin C is also very good at scavenging the free radicals on your face. These are actually breaking down your skin cells. So antioxidants are your best friends in terms of prevention. Use your products as more of a preventative means. You can get all of the beautiful sides of skincare with the aromatherapy, with all of the interesting textures and all that kind of stuff. For someone like me who has suffered from severe cystic acne for around three to four years, my skincare routine really revolved around medicated products and it was kind of sucking the joy out of enjoying my skincare routine. The only thing I could use were antibiotics or things that were going to um, kill bacteria and, and that's not fun. Benzoyl peroxide, while it's a beautiful ingredient, it's not fun to use. It's very drying, it's very uncomfortable, it stains everything. Like your skincare routine starts to become more of a chore rather than a self-indulgent experience. And the more that you can avoid that by doing the preventative measures right now to stop that will be so much better for you later. I talked about this in more detail in the skincare mistakes I made in my 20s video, but a lot of it had to do with just not understanding how the skin worked, and I didn't, to be honest. When I started my YouTube channel, it was more focused on makeup, and I really didn't know a lot about skin. And so going through that experience forced me to learn more about skin, learn more about how the skin works and what products your skin needs and so on and so forth. Preferably, we would rather not go through that traumatic experience and just end up on the side where we're doing prevention. But you know, my pain is your gain. Tip number five is all about cleaning up your lifestyle. Being an adult is really hard. There's a lot of responsibilities that you gotta do. And while you do have the freedom to pretty much go anywhere you want and do anything you want, there's a lot of other things that are involved. And in order to fit all of these things into your lifestyle, the things that you wanna do, and the things that you have to do to basically survive, you need to create balance in your life. Balance your work, balance your play, balance your friends. It's a balancing act and it can be very difficult at some time. So you really want to focus on getting your beauty sleep. Sleep is super important and honestly in your 20s I feel like you need sleep more during this time and it's the time when you're not going to have as much sleep as you did before. So make sure that you have a good relationship with sleep. So I try to exercise during the day so my body feels tired during the night. I have some soft music playing in the background. I tend to listen to jazz because I feel like it's really soothing. I tend to shower or have a bath in the evening. Anything that I can do at night to prepare myself for sleep will give me the best outcome in the morning. When I'm fully rested, I'm a happier individual and the people around me are a lot happier too. But just putting on some music and dancing for 20 minutes is better than sitting in a chair and doing nothing. Walking around, doing taking the stairs I mean you're in your house anyway so you might as well do that going outside for a jog now that this weather is getting a lot better the key here is about taking a holistic approach to your lifestyle it's about indulging yourself and making yourself feel good in moderation number six get an esthetician it is absolutely fascinating to me that we go to specialists for virtually every aspect of our body be it physicians, general health doctors, orthopedics, orthodontists, dentists. But when it comes to the largest organ in your body, which is your skin, it's seen as superficial for some reason. Your skin is the protector of your body. And typically when there's something going on wrong in your body, the first place that it expresses itself happens to be your skin. It is a necessity. Get yourself a good dermatologist that you trust and an esthetician that you trust as well. Try your best to find someone that you can ask 
um, advice from. And I'm not talking about beauty gurus and skin enthusiasts because I don't have a license to tell you anything about your skin. There are tons of dermatologists and estheticians online who have channels, who have services, free services online. The internet is a melting pot of information. And while that is great, it can also be very bad because there's a lot of information out there that is not true and not good, but you can find specialists who have books. Make it a priority to get a checkup on your skin. You know, and you also want to think about what procedures that you want to do. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having plastic surgery or having fillers or any of those more aesthetic or visual aspects of skincare. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons. I have contemplated having Botox. I smile a lot and I have a very expressive face. I'm always on camera, so I'm getting a lot of lines around my eyes and my foreheads because of how I express myself when I speak. Now, these reasons are not because I want to look a certain way. It's because for me and my lifestyle, it's something that I can foresee getting deeper, getting more lines because of it. And it's as a preventive measure. I haven't done any procedures whatsoever, but it is something I've been uh, contemplating. It's always great to get information. That's the best tool that you can possibly give yourself information and just make sure that it's coming from a credible source. The last tip is to make sure that you don't neglect the other aspects of your skin. So these little places like your eyes, your mouth, um, your neck, your hands, your feet, these areas become really big telltale signs of your skin um, as we age. For your hands, especially your hands can show a lot of aging as well. Whenever I'm driving, I actually have a sunscreen that I use for my hands. You wanna protect your hands from the sun rays as well, your arms, everything like this here, protect that too. Make sure that whatever you're applying on your face, your um, products and stuff, like your antioxidants, your vitamin C's, bring them down to this area too. This is super important to keep clear. Your arms as well, if you tend to break out in those areas, bring your antibacterial products, your benzoyl peroxide, bring all those ingredients here too, and your back. If you're using sunscreen on your neck, use it on the back of the neck too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a little something from it. Comment down below and tell me what are your skin secrets for glowing skin for years to come. I would love to hear what you guys have to share. Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in the next video. Bye!